Pro Lights on the track getting ready to go. There is Keegan Kincaid, who has had, well, let's just say a very exciting season so far. And Kincaid hoping to do a lot better today in round six. But let's check in with round number five yesterday here at Bark River. Yesterday, a lot of action going on up front. We see here Doug Matag, um, also CJ Greaves and Keegan Kincaid getting into each other. Now, is this payback or was this just a racing incident? CJ gets into Keegan, Keegan goes around and he does the right thing, he stops. But here, a little bit later, we see that CJ Greaves has to do a stop and go. So out in front, has to go through the pit for rough driving. So black flag there for CJ, which cost him the race, but now the battle, Matag again and Keegan Kincaid. Keegan Kincaid, watch, he bounces as it comes down, bam, it pops the beat on his tire and you can see the tire flopping. He goes, uh, starts to fade to the back of the field. So it was all about Doug Matag out in front and running really, really strong. So Matag takes the win in round five here in Bark River. Keegan Kincaid just unlucky yesterday. He was really putting in a good charge hoping to do better here today. Well, up front, we got Luke Johnson on the outside pole, and we also have Brad level up front. So these guys, they did invert the top six. So these that was fifth and sixth in qualifying, puts them on the front row behind them, the two guys that were going to the nail yesterday. So the blue truck there, that is Johnson on the inside as they roll around here, getting ready for this rolling start at Bark River International. And here we go. You can see the orange cones to the left. That demarks the start. And we are underway. Pro light racing at Torque. Luke Johnson getting a slight advantage over Doug Level. And here, Doug Matag coming right in with him. And CJ Greaves on the outside. But Luke Johnson, oh, over rotating, going around. Tough break for Luke. Oh, no. Johnson just laying on a little too much there on that right hander. But here we have, look at this charge coming through to the front. All of our front runners in the series points are up in this mix. Yep, we see the same guys that were battling hard yesterday. Brad Level, who is a defending champion, not last year, but the previous year, didn't have, didn't have good luck yesterday. But coming up, rounding out the top five, it, it actually in sixth place, is Jesse Johnson. He's moved up quite a bit in those first two turns, but it's Brad Level out in front now. Kincaid sitting in third place. You saw him lean on CJ Greaves just a little bit earlier there. Kind of pushed him out of the way. Lovell, though, is trying to hold off the charge of Doug Mittag, and then Kincaid behind those two. The so, first couple guys, as they're going around, watch, they're looking for dry spots because they, they groom the track and then they throw water down. So the guys will run a little bit wider lines because it's the, the outside cushion is not real heavy yet. And you also got to make sure that you don't do what happened to Luke Johnson, spin around on the inside. Oh, so Matag cuts off Brad Lovell. Actually helped Lovell out. Lovell got a little bit sideways. Doug came in and actually tipped his nose and saved him from spinning around. And Tony can add a little bit more on level. Tony. Oh, well, his level just about over rotated, got into another truck. What I was going to tell you guys is he was telling me yesterday morning that they've been fighting carburetor issues. They've been fighting electrical issues. So yesterday they struggled again. He was just hoping that he could get out on the racetrack and focus on driving instead of trying to figure out what all these mechanical issues are. Uh, speaking of mechanical issues, the 33, the black monster truck of CJ Greaves, looks like it's putting out an awful lot of is that smoke? Yeah, CJ Greaves spitting out a lot of smoke. That could be tranny, that could be uh, oil. With this roost, the first couple laps, it does fill up the, tra the coolers quite a bit, but it doesn't seem to be slowing CJ down too much. So Doug Mittag currently in the lead over Keegan Kincaid. We're looking back right now at this battle for fourth and fifth between Brad Lovell and CJ Greaves. Greaves in the black and green truck. These two drivers yesterday were battling for the lead test, and right now, Doug Matag, yesterday's winner, but Keegan Kincaid was very, very fast. Unfortunately, had, we don't want to call it a sophomore, sophomore jinx because he's been around for a while, but it is his first year of defending a championship. 2013 Pro Light Series champion, Keegan Kincaid, the number seven. Oh, Matag, a little bit of a mistake there. In the same place, Tess, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but the same exact place that he passed uh, Brad Level is what happened there. So right now, these guys going tooth and nail. And, and amazing, through this season, we have seen Kincaid fighting with Doug Mittag, and we, we've seen all kinds of hijinks. He literally landed on the back of Mittag's truck back in Carolina, and here, he, he's just trying to find a way around. 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough call because you see how heavy this roost is when the guys go out and, and they get into it. As I said before, but this the only thing that's worse is if you fall in a hydroplane and you get that roost of water coming at you. This actually will slow you down. It hits your car, slows you down, but it's also doing damage because it's filling your radiators, even though they're in the back, full of sand. So you don't want to mess around like in other car racing where you can draft. You need to get in front, and these trucks love clean air. So one, two, and three, Mittag Kincaid, and we haven't talked about him a lot yet, but Jarrett Brooks, the number 77, our current points leader in pro light, doing well. Keegan Kincaid, though, really, he's just so hungry for this result. Yeah, and Jarrett Brooks rounding out the top three. Now, remember, we have a competition yellow, which at first, when I was a racer, I'll be honest with you, I hated it. I wanted to get out front, establish a big lead, and, and enjoy my race. But now, since Jim Baldwin started that, we race, we race to the halfway point, and then we race to the finish line. So right now, Jarrett Brooks, very, very smart, staying out of the mix, letting those two guys do what they need to do up front, and watch for him at the end of the race. Well, he's probably seen enough this season of those two trucks tangling. <laughs> and if I was out, just sit there and wait until they do something wrong and just pop right on by. Exactly, but they are both driving very, very fast. It's not like Brooks can catch them and drive around at any moment. These two guys are blistering fast right now. They're running 128s um, right back and forth, 128.9 and 128.8, so they are flying. So in the league, Doug McTagg, second place, Keegan Kincaid, then Jarrett Brooks, the white truck right behind them. And again, it, Kincaid is just trying to find that way past. He really is nosing in on almost every lap, but Matag holding holding his ground pretty well. Yeah, I've known Dougie Matag for, for quite a while. Watched him. He grew up racing razors and all different kinds of stuff. The kid is an animal behind the wheel. Here we're looking at Jared Brooks coming down off the off-camera, do the double jump going into the what they call cemetery turn. These guys are going about 85 miles an hour through there. You think that's not fast because that's what your Prius will do? But it's well, sideways. Try, <laughs> but try it sideways with a bunch of other guys, a bunch of other egomaniacs next to you. Here we go, Kincaid taking a look again, this time on the inside. Right now, Keegan is the fastest on the track. He seems to be able to fall back and catch up to Doug. So he might loosen him up a little bit, little rub him sideways, and, and then stick a nose in on the inside. So what I'm thinking uh, Keegan's going to do is shoot to the outside and then come up the inside. But nope, made me a liar goes right around the outside of him. So Keegan is the truck on the move. Looks almost like he's trying to square off those corners a little bit and get some traction on the exit. Well, we've talked about it. This is a lot like a motocross track. And on a motor motocross bike, you can throw it sideways and the square turns off. But with the weight and the lean of the vehicle, you just got to keep momentum. So now we have Keegan Kincaid with a power move around the outside and now two lengths in front of Doug Matag. Now we saw that Keegan Kincaid was fastest on the track when he was behind Matag. Can he now put some distance between between himself and the number 81 truck as the 77 of Jarrett Brooks is now working the back of Matag. Exactly. We talked about him laying back. Well, he's tired of laying back. He sees that Keegan has gotten by, so Jarrett Brooks is going, going to work after his teammate. That is an awesome shot right there, and I got to tell you, Tess, it's one of the coolest feelings in motorsports to come flying over that right-hand turn. It's completely blind. You're sideways here. Power move by Jared wow. coming to the inside, showing a little respect as a teammate, not taking out his not taking out his partner. So there, Jared Brooks, the white number 77, was just a, a hair away from the leaning on Doug Mittag to get by, but still, those two are not letting. Kincaid get away by any means. One, two, and three are all within a second of each other. Exactly. Well, and then, then that, that goes. A lot of times a smart racer, when a guy gets by you, you watch and you do whatever he does, and that looks like what Doug Matag is doing. A little punt there from Brooks on Matag as he slowed down into that corner. So I think Jared Brooks may be getting a little bit impatient. But right now, the, the, this Bark River track is really, really good. We're coming up with the competition yellow here shortly. Uh, but these three drivers all, it looks, like, it looks like a drift competition at high speed over big bumps and jumps. So Keegan Kincaid, the number seven, still in the lead as they will come around to our competition caution at the end of this lap. And that will have them all then lined up nose to tail. And here we go, competition caution. So at the competition caution, Keegan Kincaid leads them out over Doug Mittag and Jarrett Brooks. CJ Greaves, we thought maybe he had a little bit of trouble there, but he's hanging on to fourth place. 
and they are coming around to the green flag that will start these final five laps of racing in our pro light category. Well, anybody that had problems at the beginning, we'll see what happens, you know, to round off the top 10. Sylvester was in 10th, Dismore in 9th, Morris in 8th, both Johnson, Jesse, and Luke in 6th and 7th, so let's go racing. So here we go, they have passed the cones and Keegan Kincaid leads them out. Oh, Jared Brooks all over the back of Doug Mittag trying to get that second place and CJ Greaves now also taking a look. CJ Greaves now climbing all over the back of Jared Brooks. That gives Keegan Kincaid just that little bit of breathing room so now he can run as much of the track as he wants. He's not worried about someone torpedoing him in the corner. Oh, Jared Brooks shorted that double right there and drove the front end in. Jumping a little bit short here. Yeah, it's one of those things, as the track starts to go away, you have really hard pack and rock underneath test and the soft dirt on the top. See, now that, Doug Matag has to watch that because that will blow the tire out. These are DOT tires. In Pro 2 wheel drive and Pro 4 wheel drive, we have custom tires that can take this side load. We saw yesterday what happened to Keaton Kincaid. You side load these tires too hard, you're gonna blow them apart. So Keegan Kincaid now putting about 10 truck lengths on the rest of the field. and. Well, the rest of the field are actually really charging behind him. C.J. Greaves taking a look there at the number 77 to Jarrett Brooks for third. There goes Luke Johnson. He's coming through right now in six right behind Brad Lovell. Yeah, he passed Brad Lovell through the S's, and so now he's back behind C.J. Greaves. So as my son, yes, I am biased. He needs to go to work and watch those guys in front of him and try to reel them in because the yellow is over. We're going all the way to checkered flag. And that uh, small mistake from his pole position there, you know, spinning on that first corner, he's managed to... Small mistake, that's a huge mistake. To retain his position, and I know, I'm sure, like, <laughs> Papa will have a few words oh, yeah. with we'll Luke talk about, after the race. We'll talk about that after the race, but back to the leaders, and now we're watching C.J. Greaves. We did see some smoke at the beginning, but he's, he pulled it back together. Here we're watching Luke Johnson and, and Brad Level going back and forth. He cleans the double, very good. So right now, he just has to worry about Brad behind him and go after those guys in front of him. Keegan Kincaid, the 2013 Pro Light champion, had a rough start to his season, but he's in the lead so far. You're watching, though, Luke Johnson and Brad Lovell, and Johnson actually now putting a little bit of distance between himself and Lovell, trying to chase down C.J. Greaves. This is one of the tracks that Luke has liked the most. He likes the speed. He did really well here last year in the buggy, and he also this is the only place and his first win in a Pro Light two years ago, so he does dig this Bark River track. Oh, Jared Johnson almost trying to block the inside there, going right up on the bank. C.J. Greaves, Jared, right Jared behind Brooks, him. Slight correction, then we got another. We got a couple too many Jarrets out here, but Jared Brooks is running hard. He's working all over the place, and C.J. Greaves is now. Do I go left or do I go right? But I have to try to stay out of the roost because you can't see when you're back there getting getting the, all the dirt thrown in your face. So there, Brooks just trying to find the inside on Doug Matag. But Keegan Kincaid is in the lead in our pro light here from Bark River with a lot of hard charging trucks behind him. Can Kincaid hang on and finally win one? Find out when we come back. Welcome back to Torque, the off-road championship presented by Amsoil. This is the throwdown in the UP from Bark River, Michigan. You can see Keegan Kincaid just going out of the frame there. He is our leader, but what a race we have for second place. A three-way dice. You got Doug Matag up on the cushion and Jared Brooks coming in. Not so polite this time, and here comes C.J. Greaves down the inside. Who's going to get the run through the S-turns? Oh, three wide as they come into the S's, and how did they make it through <laughs> there? Oh, Unbelievable. Wow. But I think, for Jared about, Brooks. I think we lost a tire on Jared Brooks. What I was saying earlier, you can't land these trucks completely sideways. And with uh, CJ Greaves coming in on him, that knocked him sideways. And you can see that tire is smoking and he blew out his right rear. And, and there really, Brooks was leaning heavily on Doug Mittag, the number 81. You can see there with CJ Greaves. And Greaves just saw an opening and went for it. Oh. Jared Brooks, oh, here comes Brad Level going by when you got this, but he is close to the pit, but unfortunately, once again, we are past that yellow flag, so he's going to have to go to the back to, to get that tire fixed. So that is very disappointing for Jared Brooks, and what that might mean is that at the end of this race, there could be a different leader in the pro light points. Right now, Doug Matag still doing work, but you can see that Keegan Kincaid in that red number seven truck. So if you're wondering why he has a seven, uh, red 
plate and everybody else runs yellow, that's because he's the defending champion to give him a little bit of a different look. But Doug really, really landing sideways. I, I, I think he's going to be wearing wear his tires out, to be honest with you. I, I think he's feeling the pressure there from C.J. Greaves behind him. And here we see Luke Johnson. Yeah, something happened to Luke. He's in the back. Now he's getting lapped. So I don't know what happened. It looks like he's under power, but down, down, down quite a ways. He's all the way down in 18th. So uh, King Kincaid is now lapping up to 18th place. So we'll try and find out later what happened to Luke. And uh, actually, Luke Johnson and Jesse Johnson both dropped right down the standings. Yeah, they could have been some contact back there, but uh, who knows. But right now, Keegan Kincaid is running a flawless race. He's using the cushion where he needs to, running really, really solid across the blue groove. So he's doing an awesome job while these guys are taking care of each other. CJ Greaves in the black truck, Doug Mittag in the red and white truck. And they really are putting up quite a battle here for second place. I like what CJ's doing. He's using the inside, the outside, trying to work around. But also, I like what Doug is doing as well. He's just holding his line. He's not trying to block. He's just trying to drive as fast as he can. And that's what you want to see with these young racers, is guys that just try to go fast. And if somebody puts a wheel on you, that's part of the racing. So Keegan Kincaid still in the lead. And there you see the white flag. There's one lap remaining in our pro light race. Luke Johnson. Uh, of course, give a little bit of space there to let the leaders come through. He's one lap down. Keegan Kincaid, could this be his day to finally get a win in our 2014 Torque Championship season? Right now, if, if I buy some money, I put it on Keegan Kincaid. He's running smooth, smart, and he, he's been here before. He's won the championship, so he knows what it takes. He is almost two and a half seconds ahead of that red and white truck of Doug Mittag, who is still holding off CJ Greaves. And I think Greaves is going to have to make a pretty desperate last minute attempt to get past him. Yeah, and CJ is known for it. CJ is an aggressive little racer, comes from a motocross background. So he's definitely going to give it a shot. And here there he it goes. is. Is it going to hold? He last leans on him. CJ Greaves makes the pass for second place. Strong, strong power move for C.J. Greaves. He, he set that up well. Came up the far right side, shot to the inside. So really a spotter can't, can't tell you what to do. Right now, Doug taking a look on the inside, but he would have had to completely bonsai and blow him out of the corner. So a lot of respect right there. So Mittag doesn't manage to get past there. C.J. Greaves holding second place. But it's all about Keegan Kincaid today who will come across to take his first win in the 2014 Torque season. Finally, he manages to get to a race clean. Kincaid takes the win here in Bark River. So Keegan Kincaid finally gets one. Our 2013 champion now is on the race for the 2014 championship.